Hey guys, Jennings Brower here with Pond Megastore. Nowadays, there is a ton of misinformation out there about why you have algae in your koi pond or your water garden. If you spend a few minutes with me today, we can get to the very bottom of this and figure out some of the causes and solutions to the algae that is in your pond. Today we're going to discuss in detail some of the causes of algae in your pond. You might be asking yourself, is algae in my pond bad or just unsightly and unwanted? What are some of the causes of the algae growth in my pond? Are there any products that fight against algae? Is there anything that I'm doing accidentally to cause the algae bloom? And lastly, am I just overly worried about something that I really don't have to? Now, I love the pool almost as much as I love a flourishing water garden. However, most pools in the USA still need to be cleaned often and hit with powerful chemicals to keep algae away. As you all can see, we have no fish in this pool. However, if you were to let it go 7 to 10 days without a good cleaning and without some good chemicals, you would see algae begin to grow on all the sides. All you need is sunlight, water, and a little bit of dust particulates in the air, and you'll have algae. Algae spores occur naturally, and once the chemicals dissipate, they're the only organism left to take advantage of all the nutrients in the water, thus starting a rapid algae growth. Now, as you all can imagine, in a koi pond or a water garden, will have at least a million times more nutrients than your typical swimming pool. The two factors that lead to the type of algae that you have are the source of the nutrients, where the nutrients are coming from, and the conditions around your pond. Now we might ask ourselves, because of the algae, how did we get this excess nutrients or biomass in our pond? The three factors behind me can hopefully be simple explanations as to why. Number one, we might be overfeeding our fish or our koi. When we do this, there's excess waste in the water, meaning excess nutrients, and this can cause an algae bloom. Number two, when old plants die and they decay, that also adds nutrients to the water that we might not need. Number three, when you have excess runoff water from rain or from sprinklers, excess nutrients can come just from that water and cause algae blooms. Now we also have two possible environmental factors that can cause major algae blooms. Number one is having too much sunlight. Yes, it is possible to have too much sunlight. Number two, a change in water, whether adding or taking away, that can remove very beneficial bacteria and diatoms. Number one, let's talk about sunlight. Yes, it is possible, as we mentioned previously, to have too much sunlight on your pond. If your pond is not at least 40% covered by either floating plants or lilies, you have a much larger chance of having an algae bloom because algae loves sunlight. Now, if you have at least 60% of your pond covered by floating plants or lilies, we can almost guarantee that you will not have any algae because the algae will not be getting nearly enough sunlight to have a bloom. Now let's talk about changing the water in the pond. First and foremost, when you have a brand new pond, it is expected to have an algae bloom within the first two weeks. Your pond needs to go through what we call cycling, which is getting used to itself. During this at least two week period of cycling itself, we do not recommend adding any fish as the pond is not ready to be a healthy environment for the fish. Now, we do use this term cycling or cycled in many of our videos, so hopefully now you are familiar with the term. Whenever you add a whole lot of new water, meaning you've taken some water from the pond and now you are adding some new water, even if it's not chlorinated whatsoever, that can take away a lot of the already established healthy bacteria and diatoms that have been keeping the pond clean. The last thing is if it's a freshly cleaned pond, meaning the water is still the same, but you've cleaned the algae out, you've cleaned the sides. Yes, you've taken algae out of the pond, but you've also removed a lot of the healthy bacteria and diatoms. And these are the three things with changing the water in the pond that might cause an algae bloom. Now, there are three types of algae we deal with commonly in ponds. Number one, string algae or hair algae. 
This can basically be removed by hand. It grows on rocks, waterfalls, the side of the pond, and even plants that are not healthy. If you see it growing on a plant, the plant may have a stressor like rocks or algicide, which is causing it to decay and feed the algae. Number two, green water or pea soup algae. These algae are single celled and are not connected to one another physically. They are individual floating organisms in the water, which give the water the appearance of pea soup. Number three, film of algae. Not longer than a quarter inch covering the walls and floor of the pond or stones in the water. Now, I want to know what kind of algae do you guys have based on what we just talked about? And what time of year do you typically have these algae problems? Please let us know down in the comments below and this will help us get better answers to you as soon as possible. Now we're going to talk about what products are useful and what products are not useful to stop algae from growing. Number one is algicides. These products often say they are fish and plant safe, but if used improperly, will kill or damage both fish and plants. Note that by zapping the algae, you are not removing the nutrients from the pond, rather converting them temporarily from a green living organism back to free floating nutrients that will be sitting there ready to become algae again the moment that the chemical dissipates. A second side effect from algicides is that the rapid release of dead decaying algae in the pond can become ammonia, which is toxic to fish. Any ammonia spike can cause the fish to die. So, a side effect of rapidly killing algae may end up making the pond toxic to the fish the chemical indirectly affected. Hence, we do not advise using chemicals for an algae issue. Number two ultraviolet sterilizers. This product is only good to temporarily kill the green free-floating algae which can pass through the unit. The algae are zapped by the UV radiation and comes out of the unit dead. But remember, the dead particulates are food for other types of algae such as hair algae. Hair algae won't move from where it is growing to the unit, so that is one negative. Be sure you have an active biofilter with aged beneficial bacteria added to the pond and plenty of plant life. In these instances, UV lights are good and problems with green water are solved. Now here are some tips for you. Be sure to change the UV bulbs after 12 months of use even if they still light up. Be sure the pump used with the UV light is not pumping too much or too fast for the unit. If the water passes through too fast, the algae cells will not die and you are wasting your time. Number three, barley straw or barley straw extract. Now heads up, barley items should be used as a preventative. However, people often purchase barley items as a solution to pre-existing problems. The enzyme in the barley extract and barley bale prevent algae from multiplying, but they won't get rid of an existing issue. Barley extract is the only product we do recommend. It works in cold water and warm water and begins its work immediately. In my opinion, barley bales look bad sitting there floating in the water. They take weeks to break down and in cold water, they don't break down and release the enzyme efficiently as well as they do when the water is above 60 degrees. The barley extract is a good item. The barley bale itself I would avoid because we have much better solutions coming up in a moment. Number four, beneficial bacteria and beneficial diatoms. Now we are getting somewhere. How about two organisms that help keep the pond healthy for fish and keep it pleasing to the eye? Beneficial bacteria mainly grow in moving or oxygenated water in filter systems, creeks or streams, or through other moving water which carry lots of air through to the organisms which are busy at work. Beneficial bacteria and beneficial diatoms use up the excess nutrients in the water and compete with the algae there by reducing the growth of algae as you build these other organisms. Note that every time you clean or drain the pond or fill with excess amounts of new water, the bacteria and diatoms take a hit 
and this is why you see algae grow after those water changes. Number five, live plants. We can simply supplement the algae with beautiful live plants that also compete with the algae for the nutrients in the pond. You can use submerged grasses like hornwort, lemon bacopa, red ludwigia, and moneywort uptake lots of nutrients, and these are good plants to have. You can also use floating plants like the Botswana wonder, water mimosa, or sensitive plant, water lettuce, and water hyacinth are excellent for nutrient uptake and also shade the water, giving algae a one-two punch with less sunlight and less nutrients to work with. Water lilies help shade the pond. Remember, our goal is 50 to 60% coverage with leaves on the top of the water to prevent all forms of algae throughout the pond. No pond with 60% coverage by plants should have an algae problem ever. For koi ponds where you may not be able to grow water lilies, consider adding a bog area of 15 to 20 percent of the size of the entire koi pond or raised pots with marginal plants like canna or papyrus to uptake the nutrients and keep the water clear. Two weeks of cycling the pond with growing plants, bacteria, and diatoms with your patients from adding any unnecessary products or cleanings will get the pond in balance. Be careful how much you feed fish and koi. We feed them mostly because we want to. Every other day is more than adequate. There is a lot in the water for them to eat, from bugs to algae. Many people who do not overstock their ponds never feed fish and the ponds generally survive through a balanced ecosystem. The last type of algae we have not talked much about is the film of algae, which grows on the sides of the pond only a quarter inch out or less. This is a sign of a very healthy and balanced ecosystem. Do not try and get rid of these algae. Do not treat with chemicals as it will destroy the balance and the pond will easily slip out of check. Note seasonal changes in the pond, such as cold weather breaking, excess rain, especially in the spring, or other quick short-term changes that can trigger algae, but we find it is best to be patient. Algae is not bad. I will repeat that. Algae is not bad. It is one of nature's quick fixes for a different issue. I hope this video has been helpful to you. And for new pond owners, I would love to hear directly back from you. Down in the comments below is a great place to reach us. You can also reach us by email, and you can always look for more information on our website, www.pondmegastore.com. We can always create a future video answering your direct questions. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Once again, my name is Jennings Brower. If you liked this video, please make sure to turn that little gray thumb blue. Give this thing a like and to be notified of all future videos, make sure you ring that bell so that you don't miss anything from Pond Megastore. I'd like to thank you once more for watching this video from myself and Pond Megastore. Please give us any questions you have in the comments below by email. Check out the website and as always, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. If you want to make it even better, you can go watch any of our other videos right now.